Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm excited today to be joined by one of our favorite guests, Jerry Nielsen, President and CEO of True Diligence. Hey, Jerry, how are you today? Hey, Eva, thanks so much. I'm glad to be with you today. We always love having you on the show. And today we have a really interesting topic. We're going to be talking about the fear of changing background screening companies. And that, that's yes. something that you and I have had a discussion about recently. So um, it is something that is, is certainly something that we experience as we're talking to prospects, that there is that overall fear of, of change. And so I'm glad we get a chance to, to, to kind of hash some of that out today. Absolutely. And for those of you that are new to the podcast or you haven't met Jerry before, True Diligence has been a leader in background checking services for over 29 years. And they're known for their quick turnaround times, accuracy, superior customer service, and PBSA accreditation, which is not an easy thing to get accredited for. And they also have a, a really deep industry knowledge. So Jerry, we're glad to have you back. And so when we were talking the other day about the friction from companies uh, against changing background screening companies, why do you think that happens? You know, I think it's, I think it's honestly a little bit more of a life issue, right? I think it is, I think we see fear of change in many, many places within our lives, right? And so obviously that translates into, into our industry and in that I, I think that in, in so many instances, users that are already making use of a background check service, although it may not be exactly suited to their needs or, or rising to the level that they would like it to, in some ways, I just think it's easier, right, to just stay with what you've got in place, working or not working at whatever level it is, and, and it, it's, it's an easier alternative, honestly, in a lot of users' minds, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I wonder why companies would wait into the point of frustration, uh, revenue loss, or loss of a good candidate, a top candidate for that matter, or a software failure to then sure. make a change. So why do you think that they wait? Yeah, I think it happens quite a lot that you don't you don't think about exploring alternatives until there's a pain point, right? Until you've got an applicant that is looking to depart from your job opportunity because they've got something else on the horizon and they're unwilling to wait, or you've got frustrations with your vendor based on overall turnaround times or cost or technology or processes. You know, it could be any number of things. You know, I, I do think that there is a, a, a trend not to fix the wheel until it's broken, right? And, and, and oh my gosh, you know, we could talk about so many instances where if you can implement a solution before the pain point rises to that level of attention, there are so many advantages to doing so, right? Absolutely. I remember a time when I was in HR consulting and recruiting and I was doing executive recruiting and we were waiting on our background screen to allow the person to get started. And they were calling us saying, can yeah. I get started? And we were like, yeah. not yet. And they, we lost the candidate to another job. And it was- We hear it all, all the time. Experience. We really? do, we hear it all the time. We do, we hear it all the time. You know, people that, you know, you think about your onboarding cost in today's business environment on getting an applicant in the door, if you can get qualified applicants to even apply in the way that the job market is out there these days, right? And, you know, you, you go through that process and you, you, you make the job offer and, and you think about the, you know, the, the, the time and the cost potentially that are involved and in even making the selection and getting them to the background check phase only to have your background check process fail and blow up the entire process, right? Because of a lengthy turnaround time. And so, you know, there are, there are luckily, there are alternatives out there where that can be mitigated. And, and I obviously, I think that's, you know, that's the core of our discussion today is, is, is exploring those alternatives. Well, how does True Diligence bridge that gap? So, you know, I think there's a few things we do. You know, we, we have a very easy, streamlined client onboarding process. So I think, you know, the first hurdle that we have to jump, obviously, is, is making our account setup process as easy and as streamlined as we possibly can. So that the, so that the change, you know, change is always painful in people's minds, right? In, you know, in terms of process, you know, in terms of procedures. And so anything we can do from just the setup process to help mitigate that, I think we, we do a great job of implementing. So we don't have any contracts, we don't have any setup fees, we don't have any monthly minimums. Um, and our account setup process really is triggered through a, a simple online application process that takes less than five minutes to complete. 
once that process is completed, uh, that account will go through a verification and a vetting process on our side to maintain regulatory compliance. And that usually takes 30 minutes or less. And so in a nutshell, it boils down to we can have accounts set up and vetted and operational usually same day, you know, within a matter of, of business hours at most. And wow. so I think that's a I think that's a, a wonderful hurdle to have eliminated is just simply to get the account set up, right? And then from there, I think really where we focus then is on training, right? You know, let's let's make this process work in the way that the client needs it to work. Right. I mean, there are so many customization knobs within our system that can be engaged at the account level to help tailor the system to that client's experience so that beyond the account setup and the change, it allows us to be as effective as we possibly can. Right. Absolutely. And you're really it's, I think it's the unknown of what will happen and the the fear of uh, do I even have time to go through this process? But you guys shoulder a lot of the load for your clients? You know, we do in terms of, we all have had experiences in life, I think, right? Where we have thought the grass was greener in some specific area, right? And we've made that change only to be disheartened after we're standing in that spot, right? And mm -hmm. and I don't think that, I think we can apply that in a lot of instances, right? And so I, we're really cognizant of that, I think, when it when it comes to understanding what a client is going through when they're making a vendor change and doing anything we can, you know, to mitigate those fears and to make that a smooth and seamless transition at any level that we can. Right. And you guys are pretty competitive in price. Um, so how else do you help companies save money? You know, I think I think there's a number of ways. Yes, we're competitive in price. Um, we've got volume-based pricing structures that that are very competitive across the industry. I think also, uh, you know, when you talk about a dollar amount, you have to look at the time savings that could potentially be implemented, right? I mean, we have a lot of technology that can lay on top of an account in terms of the controls that I, I mentioned a minute ago that can just ease the process. You know, a, a process, if you're using a manual process now and we can teach you how to make use of some of the automation that's available that can minimize your order entry process from maybe a five minute per applicant process down to a 30 second process per applicant to get the order in the system, then I think there is significant savings there, right? From a time standpoint. And then I think the flip side of that is also what we talked about a minute ago, which is not having the looming prospect of losing a highly qualified applicant that you've invested time and money into leave right. because your process is failing you in some way, right? right? So if we could help mitigate those those unnecessary losses from your applicant pool by getting the background check back in a more mm -hmm. timely, more effective, more streamlined process, I think I think that, that you know the the time and cost savings there could be immeasurable. Well, it just I'm thinking about my own experience in recruiting and, and how I felt um, just at the mercy of the wait. And now you guys streamline the process you may, and technologically it's advanced, which in today's world, if you should expect that <laughs> to kind of happen for you, but it also makes the people management side of things so much easier and smoother and more assured. Mm -hmm. So why um, would you encourage companies to make the switch now proactively versus wait the wait until it's broken methodology. Yeah, I, I just, I think that they're very well in true diligence could be a better alternative. You know, that why wait until you are experiencing pain and you're trying to get a position filled and are having difficulties. And if that is your standard experience, I just simply know the industry well enough and know our systems well enough to know that the technology exists to help mitigate that for you. And so I, you right. know, why, why wait until, until something is, is, is tipped over and or broken before you, you address it. Right. And if we can find you in a better position, then that is certainly our goal out the gate, you know, is, is, is to make sure that this experience in, in changing vendors is as painless as it possibly can be that your onboarding process is smooth and that your training is, is as efficient as it can be so that we can we can not have any drop balls through that process and, and have you in a better place before a breakdown in your processes forces that, right? I think right. we'd like to do that preemptively. And if you can find yourself in a better space, then I think that is obviously, you know, our, our goal in that is to make sure that that's where you land. 
and you guys have had clients for more than a decade at a time. You have long lasting relationships with your clients. And we know that you guys really pull through on the customer service, which in today's world, like we have to partner with our clients like this. We just have we to. Do. We do. Yeah. You know, we've, we've, you and I have talked about this in, in offline conversations before that, you know, there are so many background check companies out there, I think, in my opinion, that view this as a data industry, right? And this is not a data industry. This is a people industry, right? And, and there are people behind the reports that we are pulling that are trying to advance themselves in a placement process to land a job or an apartment or whatever the purpose of the report might be. And so, mm -hmm. you know, so much of our goal is to be a partner, as you mentioned, and a tool in that process, not a barrier. You and I've also talked a little bit about, you know, how at least in, in, in traditional terms and historical terms, human resources people always have, have seen the background check process as a necessary evil. You know, there is right. no way around it. It has to be done in today's business world. And, um, and so anything we can do to not have that be a barrier um, is, is certainly the end game. Well, you guys are a win-win in my book because you save money, you save time, and time is money. <laughs> it's our yes. most valuable asset. So um, Jerry, how can companies or our listeners today get in touch with you? Yeah, for sure. There's a number of, there's another methodology you can get to us. Our website is at www.truediligence.com. That's spelled T-R-U-D-I-L-I-G-E-N-C-E.com. On that page are contact forms. There are live chat options um, and even a getting started link in the upper left-hand corner of the homepage that you could begin the process of getting an account set up. Um, and, you know, from there, we're available by phone, chat, and email. Awesome. Awesome. Well, cool. our audience can also find a quick link in the description below this podcast after um, they get to view it today. So, Jerry, I love having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love being here. <laughs> yeah, and we enjoy working with you guys. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Trucking Tower podcast today. And we appreciate everyone joining us today. And we'll see you again next time. Take care. Yes, thank you so much. Bye-bye.